This is my talk, uh, The No Man's Land of Young Entrepreneurship. This is Addis Ababa, capital of Ethiopia. A country of great disparate wealth, and a country where the majority of the inhabitants' first thoughts aren't about finding a progressive company to work for, to gain security. Their security actually comes from their innate ability to spot opportunities around them, to make a living from the dirt and sometimes with it. This is an entrepreneurial ethos, shared and promoted all around the developing world. And it seems like over here in England, this entrepreneurial mindset has been lost. Due to the lack of education in lesser developed countries, it's the norm to find yourself behind a stand, selling whatever you can craft from whatever you can find. Admittedly, in Ethiopia, there are places of great deprivation and a massive lack of wealth, yet we can pick away at this communi community and we can see they've got something going for them. Here's uh, the great deprivation in Addis Ababa, and here's the market stalls that people create every day just to make a living. So this woman named Bethlehem Tilunalimu, born and raised in Addis Ababa, was inspired by the innovational idea she saw as a child. Whilst walking down the streets of Addis Addis Ababa, she saw people making shoes from tires. And when she got older, she wanted to create a business. So she did, from this shoe from tire idea. And now her company was, and still is, the fastest growing African shoe brand, cre creating a recognizable brand, starting from scratch from a poor developing country, creating uh, her first US store in Silicon Valley in 2014. Without the small market stores, businesses and shops surrounding her from such a young age, this keen eye for innovation and entrepreneurship would most likely not be present. This is something to note. Wasn't this drive and ultimately this passion for business over here in England? I've always had a keen eye for business. At 13 years old, I saw at my school people were always hungry for food or snacks. Of course, our uh, school did out snacks for us, but it was never enough. I saw a gap in the school market, you could say. So one day, I came in with a cool, uh, cool bag filled to the brim with cans of Coke, chocolate, and sweets. As you can tell, my business was very healthy. <laughs> I came in with new stock every day um, to be annoying to my mum and dad, <laughs> who we always pleaded with to get new stock to bring in the next day. I saw that break times, lunch times, and even after school, if there was enough stock left, that is, everything went, went, went um, surprisingly fast. This small business taught me about very big ideas from such a small age, such as supply and demand, or sell what's hot. For example, if I bought in a certain chocolate bar one day and it sold really well, I knew where to reinvest my profits. And also, since I was the only one really selling at my school, Obviously, there's not going to be many people selling out of school. <laughs> I could set my prices reasonably high. Uh, with all this business, as I say, I sold it all the time. And eventually, um, I had to stop due to exams coming up. Um, but it was a nice, healthy income. And as I say, it taught me about very big ideas from such a small age and such a small business. <laughs> I remember when um, I did this business, some people came up to me um, with some legal claim, basically saying my business was illegal. Um, but after looking up the validity of all these legal claims, they're all false. It's another great example of the stifling effect of the system versus the entrepreneurial flair. There are so many great examples of this system versus entrepreneurial flair, you could say. For example, I'm 16 and I can't officially open an official business until I'm 18. And even if I created a business but not, but not an official one, I can't use any money transfer services online, so I'd have to go through my parents for that kind of thing. We should stop this massive segregation between adults and children in the business world. Normally in TED Talks, people promote the traditional idea of staying in school and getting a great education. However, there seems to be a polar opposite in the TED world where some people are advocating an unconventional approach to one's early life to drop out of school and start a business early. Now, I'm for both these options, and I think you'll definitely agree there's pros and cons for both. However, I think there's a middle ground, a no man's land where I think some people are just too scared to visit, where you can both have a great education and run a successful business. 
Now, I'm not saying this is easy, as I've learned over the past year or so. However, with enough determination and a drive for this innovation and this entrepreneurship, then it's entirely possible. In fact, it becomes easier after a while. Also, I'm not saying you have to make a million pound making, employing hundreds of people in business before you leave school. No, in fact, I'm saying the opposite. I'm saying you can have a small business to teach you the ropes, how to manage people, how to talk appropriately with clients, also how to do social media promotion, marketing, all these key skills we could be taught at such a younger age. I'm now 16, and I own a business that works within the popular indie game Minecraft. Let me explain, because a business that works within a game which is ultimately a business itself seems like a very odd concept, which, to be honest, it really is. So, <laughs> our name is Team Veyron, and to put it in the literalist, simplest terms possible, we place blocks in a game. But, startling as it may seem, placing blocks in a game can get you quite lucrative and awesome experiences and creations. Um, so, since our second era, uh, which basically happened in May 2015, I took over the business from the previous owner, we've gained popularity, becoming one of the biggest, most successful build teams in the, in the game itself. An astonishing feat? Maybe not if you don't work within a game, but a term I hope you'll all know is YouTube. We've worked with some of the biggest YouTubers on the platform itself, working with people having as many as four or five million, million subscribers. But it's just a game for us. It's just how everything we do starts. Our university degrees were once finger painting in preschool. Our tax bills were once just our times tables. Everything has a small, fun beginning. We started as simply as people who just liked playing the game Minecraft and naturally we delved into the building side of it. I, for one, started building for my favorite servers in exchange for a rank on there. Basically, an in-game exchange with no real monetary value. From there, I started building for servers for small amounts of income. And from there, I started our own Team Veyron. And now, we're making enough money where we don't really need to look for part-time jobs at our ages. People will tell you to go into a field you're either passionate about or there's a free slot in the market. But other people will tell you to go into a field you didn't even know was there, delve into a market you didn't even know there was money-making possibilities. And that was definitely the case with me and my brand. But saying that, whatever your passion is, whether it's gaming, graphic design, knitting, the possibilities are literally infinite. And by passionate, I mean greatly interested in, not an expert. I speak from experience where you don't need to know everything from day one. You research. You get employees, you get families and friends to help you. Try and employ people who are better than you. Because, for example, I'm by no means the best builder on my team, or block placer. Um, you should employ people who are better than you at the certain skill sets you're looking for. So, but, but really, the passion at this age should be in yourself. Sure, the business is important, but it's not like I'm going to be running a Minecraft build team by the time I'm 20 or 30, at least for me. It's just a learning curve, a learning curve that I think all young aspiring entrepreneurs should be doing. So far, the learns I've um, learned have been key, such as social media promotion. So back in May 2015, when I first took over the business, as I say, we had tw uh, 7,000 tweet impressions that month. So the next month of my ownership, we quintupled that, making our overall tweet impressions 35,000. And now, I'm not saying this is solely down to me. However, some advertising we got with some YouTubers, getting some graphic work and a render team really helped us. Overall advertising and presentation, I've learned, are the key ways to getting a brand and an image bigger. So after all this behind the scenes work over the past few months, we're now gaining over 200,000 tweet impressions. Also, you might have heard me say Render Team. This is a group of artists who use a tool called Cinema 4D basically to render our uh, Minecraft builds. So here's an in-game screenshot of just a normal uh, vanilla Minecraft build. And here's a render of the same build. Basically, it improves the presentation and, as I say, really helps getting our name out there. I also advise to go into business class. The first time I went into business class, it was after I uh, owned my two businesses, including my sweet shop. But you should go into the field itself, because I think all the, the majority of the lessons I've learned have actually been outside my AS business class. 
In business, we get shown videos and shown books of how businesses do their procedures. But we just study them. We don't do them. When you go into the field itself, that's when you really get it. And for me, I actually started a business, if not two, if we're counting the sweet shop, before I even took business class. That doesn't sound quite right, does it? I think we should lower the age of business class and make it as an essential as a class as, say, English or maths. I see it this way. English is how we communicate, and maths is how we solve problems, but business? Business is how we all make a living, and it's how we create and design ideas for the world to enjoy. It should be and is essential to us all. How about we first start learning business when we first get into school, splitting little four-year-olds into groups and let them negotiate and start market stalls with each other? All these um, skills we could be taught at such a younger age. We need to be exposed to things to have the opportunity of pursuing them in the future. For example, I always hated English. I always hated writing essays I didn't really care about, and when I did care about them, I never even knew how to write the essays themselves or structure them. However, when I got introduced to other things like linguistics and poetry, I fell in love. This could be the same with business. There could have been thousands, if not tens or hundreds of thousands, of potential entrepreneurs walk in and out of our school doors and they never even got introduced to the notion of business. We should change that. It seems like I've only been talking about um, how it's useful to have a business now if you want to have one in the future. But business is just the building blocks. And no, not the building blocks in Minecraft, but the building blocks to life. Management skills will help me in nearly any job out there. Design will help me have a keen eye for art and beauty in the future. Dealing with clients and setting up payments, down payments, quotes and invoices will help me with any financial-based job I do, and also negotiating with clients will help me with negotiations in and outside of later life. I don't know what my path of this world entails, but I know at this moment I want to own a business I want, and I want to be in school. But in a few years I might want to do other things such as own a bigger business, go to university, even be a teacher. The possibilities are always endless as long as you set yourself up for those opportunities if they come. You can't expect to have a thriving, million pound making, employing hundreds of people business if you don't start one now, which admittedly could perhaps die or fail, or you could just give up to do something else. But at least we tried. At least we learned all the skills needed to do things one step better the next time. Our failures are the foundations for our successes. Thank you.